Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna talk about one of my favorite, favorite, favorite drum machines in my studio, and one that gets used all the time, and it's kind of the little bit of the unsung hero because it's not as flashy or as feature packed as say the analog rhythm or something like that, but it is phenomenal any which way, and that is the ER1. So here we have the ER1, AR1, ER1, and it, you can see here it is made up of four synth parts and then a couple of samples in there. You could do audio in as well, but I find it can be cool, but if I've got everything set up and I'm trying to get something going, it can kind of be like a little bit of a faff to get everything going. So I don't tend to use the audio in too much, but it's there and it is, uh, it is a really cool feature. So one thing that I really love about the ER1 is while it's not as flexible and um, you're not able to really shape the parts as much as you would like the analog rhythm or something like that. It is a really, really, really good place to start learning about synthesis, especially drum synthesis. And because there is only these limited amount of controls on here, you have, uh, what's the, what's the term? You tend to like rinse out those features a little bit more. So let's go through some of the parts and I'll show you what I mean. So these, all these four parts are effectively the same. So if we, I just have a sort of a kick sound, like a percussive thing, another weird percussive thing, and then like maybe a tom or something like that. So let's start with the kick. You can hear already super, super beefy. Now you can see at the top, we've got our oscillator here. Um, you can see we've got the pitch. So we can go, I'm not gonna stop there because it goes really, really high, but you can hear the range you have in there. So whilst I have this as a kick, you can change it to whatever you want. And the way that I usually generally, uh, usually generally, the way that I generally use this is not so much for the kick parts, I'll get them from another drum machine. This will kind of fill in all the bleeps and bloops and whatnot sort of thing. So for now, let's just have a look at the kick. And so we got the mod depth, the mod speed and the mod type. So obviously if we, you can hear there, it's starting to introduce that sort of click to the front of the kick. If we come to the speed, obviously that's how how fast this mod type is gonna be introduced. And then obviously the mod type. We have the kick, which I'm on now. And the cool thing that I do like about this is you can um, you can see when you when you save a patch or you open up a preset you can see where the original value was. So if you come in and you move everything around and, and whatnot and you're like, uh, no, I don't want that. You can come along and go, yeah, we're in the ballpark of the original value right there. It's close enough there. And there and there we go, and we come back to it. So if you are a bit new to it and you're not really sure how to make some of these sounds, um, you can just, it's kind of like a preset sort of thing. You can see where the original values were. Um, obviously we've got the two different types here. So we have the sine and the, the uh, triangle. 
you can hear that it's pretty close to an 808 sort of sound. If I got the decay on there, if I bring it over to the triangle, kind of changes the vibe up a little bit. For kicks or toms, I usually tend to stick with the sign. Um, and then over here, we've got the amp section. So we have the decay. Probably go through a good couple of bars there. Um, level, obviously. Pan, same, same. And then the other really cool thing here is the boost. So without any, pretty thin sort of sounding. Get to here and then this, if I pull this level back a bit, is where we can start to get some like little distortion on that tom on the kick rather. So there you can see just one simple sound with the kick, kind of the flexibility that you have. While you can't go making crazy, crazy stuff, you can get a lot out of the sounds. So we'll kick over to this sort of percussive sound. One super cool thing to do is kind of go through the mod types. And you can see, oh, you can, you can see, you can't see it. You can hear the, um, the changes in the sound and the sort of depth of sound that you can get. Kind of like a metallic sort of sound. So it's... Oh, that's that's cool. I like that. And then I've just got this normal sort of tom, and I think that's all that is. Is ah, it's a square. I thought that would have been the. Uh sort of the, the more percussive mod type with a bit of pitch on it rather. So if we push play now. So let's go through and make a pattern. So we'll just keep the kick four to the floor, same, same. And let's get these out. Ah, before I go in with the pattern, didn't even talk about the samples. So we have the four samples, hat, uh, that's a closed hat, open hat. For better or worse, these both uh, share a voice, so... I like it with the hat, not so much with the crash and the clap, but Again, I don't tend to use the crash too much. I mean, maybe pitch right up, but I don't t sort of use it too much. But uh, I like the clap, it's like a 909 clap. So let's get going with this pattern. So 
So let's just, we'll use the recording. And let's shape it a little bit. Ooh, that sounds a bit better. Let's go back to the kick and... Here we go. Put some hats in. And like these, it's there it goes. Let's see this. There we go. And then I like to go in and start doing some mess with the delay a little bit. Ooh. Mess it up a little bit, but you get the idea. It is super duper duper fun to play with. So there you have it. It is a really, really fun drum machine to, to sort of sink your teeth into. I think that the new Volker drum, yeah, the Volker drum is kind of taking some of the sounds from this and sort of the... the the spirit of this one. So if you don't want to f uh, invest in one of these or you can't find one to invest in, maybe the Volker drum will be more sort of in line. Um, and also it is, it's a brand new thing. So you don't have to worry about getting one of these that's kind of beaten to all hell. And yeah, it's definitely something that I love. I've heard it on a couple of new records like uh, Biceps X and probably the one that's closest to my heart when um, Gene Belcher played it in Bob's Burgers. Phenomenal, phenomenal effort there. Um, so yeah, hopefully I've inspired you to create something today. And if you want to check out some of the other videos, I don't think that anyone has actually gotten to this part of the video, but you can check out some of the other videos. And until next time, see you later.